Welcome everyone to episode 5 of Monster Hunter Try. In the last episode, we did a bunch of uh, freestyle quests. As you can see, your quest progress. Um, in the meantime, I did the egg hunt quest and the pest control quest, which I was going to do, which I did say I was going to do. Um, I hunted down two Great Jaggy. Um, as you can see here in the hunt report. Um, for a total of 350 points. It's not really much, but there's monsters later that do give more points. Um, because I got this villager quest right here, um, which basically gives us access to um, the honey farm, which is pretty important. So let's do that first. Um, I want to make all of these um, things on screen. The item gathering I'm going to do off screen, but I want to show you our progress on screen. As much as I can. And we got a second feline. So now we have two felines to do something. Cool. I didn't realize it's happened yet, but this is cool. So for now we can um, use our last of our 50 points to at least once. We need to really, really gather some points next time. Um, I'm going to do that until next time. You need a lot of points for all of these villager requests. But yeah. Um, I also gathered a ton of, as you can see, um, upgrade weapons. As you can see, we can upgrade this one, this one, and this one. So I gathered all of, all of the materials. We only have money for one, which, um, since we have this one equipped, we're upgrading this one. And yeah, there's two hammers we can make from this one. The Loot Drop splash, splash Hammer and the Carapace Hammer. Um, this one has Water Element. And this one has Bear of Skull. Um, we need more money for these ones. So we can't do that. Also, something that unlocked, um, that I basically unlocked by accident. Because I was coming home from the quest and suddenly the option was there. Um, we have now access to Switch Access. Um... To making switch axes, which is really really cool. Um, I will switch to switch axe once we have the time. Um, for now, we are going to continue with our hammer at least until a certain monster, and then we go over to switch axes. Um, I think that's all we did. It didn't take me long. It was like thirty minutes or so. The herbivore quest was way. Um, Easier than I thought it would be. And the gathering went really uh, quickly. Hi. But also, we're having this quest. Playing with fire. Uh, let's try out some of this. Um, I don't know. Crust bread. A dry butter? That should work. Fry. Let's fry it. Come on, this works. Health increased. Defense increased. Yes. Good. Um, let's depart on our quest. I think um, making these short intermissions where we do look at the progress we made since last episode is actually going to work in our favor. Um, and making the episodes shorter. And having more regular episodes might work. So, now you're asking probably what is that monster we're hunting? It's one of my favorite monsters to be honest. Um, in this game. In, in Try in general. Probably one of my favorite early early bird vivans. It's so good. 
It's so, so good. You don't even know half of it. Uh, but a paintball is always appreciated with this one. Here we go. It is in area 8, I think it starts out. So let's go over there. We are going to get into hunting a lot more bigger monsters um, pretty soon. So, here we are. There it is. Welcome to the Kuropeko. Um, as you saw, the Kuropeko can imitate monster sounds. Um, it imitates monster sounds and calls certain monsters uh, to its aid. So it just it doesn't just um, you know, use the sound, but it can imitate certain monster voices and basically call on them. What you saw with the with the Great Shaggy there, it basically called a Great Shaggy to us. That's basically the sound that the Great Shaggy does in order to summon smaller Shaggy. This is such a cool concept. Um, I think it's going to become more relevant in GU, uh, in GU, in FreeU. I don't know if there's anything to it in this game, or if it's an online thing. Probably need a cutting weapon for some of it. It also is a fire-based monster, um, if you didn't know. You can see it has... Um, on its top of its wings, it has stone-like structures, which are basically flint stones, and it uses them to, you know, clap them together to make fire, as you will probably see pretty soon. Here we go. I think you can break those flint stones. That's him calling a great jaggy. I need to hunt a bunch of these monsters probably. Kurpeko is pretty easy, but can get difficult, especially in the beginning, since you you basically just acclimated to having Great Shaggy around, and now you have a Kurpeko calling a Great Shaggy as well, you know. And two large monsters in one area is never really an easy thing to handle. You can also kill the Great Jaggy for, you know, to make it easier, but I don't want to really. As you can see, that's the, the fire attack it has, so... I'm going to try to break one of its Flintstones. But that's not as easy as it looks. I think we're going to switch to switch axe pretty soon. Um, I think there's a lot less options in terms of switch axes in this game. I think Trio has more switch axe options. Switch X options.
I think that's one of its um, things broken. Also, the game gives you dung bombs to deal with the Great Jaggy, so you can, as you can see, I threw a dung bomb at the Great Jaggy to make it go away. Yeah, as you can see on its model, uh, one of the one of the twin stones broken off. You can do that to both on the side, and you can break its um, its face. I think it's going downwards, right, to area seven. So yeah, I generally love that. I like Kurapeko as a monster. It's it's really cool. Uh, it's really unique and cool. And especially in Fiyu. Oh my god. It's the most godlike monster you could ever imagine. Oh yeah, it can also call Renoplos, which kind of sucks. It's going to get crowded in here pretty quickly. Let's go. Push it down. I don't think you can break the face with the hammer. Um, I think you need a cutting weapon for that. So we might need a cutting weapon pretty soon. Which we will get in the Switch Axe, you know. Switch Axe is a pretty good cutting weapon. I don't know how powerful it is in Monster Hunter Try. Um, I think I might look that up later in the forums or something. You know. Usually weapons when they are introduced are at the most powerful, but I don't think Switch Axe was ever this powerful, which kind of sucks, to be honest. Like, Switch Axe mains never really got a uber powerful Switch Axe, which is kind of sad. In free you it isn't as powerful anymore. At least in the meta, but I still use it a lot. But in this one it was introduced first, so I could at least hope that it's powerful. Um that's a curve pack for you. That was pretty quick. Um I'm also a veteran, so you know it's relatively easy. Um, we are, I'm going to probably, probably hunting it offline, uh, off, off screen a bunch. Um, I'm not going to make its armor. Because we already have the Jaggy armor, which should carry us for a bit. Not really too far, but for a bit at least. So we don't really need the the Kurpeko armor. Although I think it looks good. It looks really cool. But yeah. That's a Kurpeko. <sighs> Here we go. We got basically nothing. Good to know. Good to know that we basically got nothing for our efforts. So we need to hunt it a bunch bunch more. Um, I think there's a hammer we can make out of it. Um, I'm not even sure if it's worth making all of the hammers since I'm going to switch pretty soon. What is going on, chat chat? 
Ooh. So yeah, um, another thing is... Chacha can actually gather items, as did Palicos back in the day. Um, and you can equip certain masks to Chacha, and you... And yeah, we spotted a Kurapeko in the in the forest, okay. And yeah, Chacha always has um, these sort of um, villager requests that you can make the masks with. Different masks have different uh, things. So yeah, he's talking about decorations. We can craft certain decorations. Um, I don't know. Should I look at my skills? I think it's eating, right? Oh, it has a tuck up S. Jaggy armor has a tuck up S. Um, half stun, which is. Wow, this one's really powerful. Half stun and gluttony. Not bad. Holy shit, attack up and half stun. Not too shabby, not too shabby. Um, so yeah, you are not selling anything else. Let's gear up for the next adventure that we're going to have. What is the next one? A Royal Ludra. So yeah, this is a capture quest. Um, I'm going. I'm not going to do this one. I think. No, no, we're not going to do that. Um, I, I'm going to do this off screen. But at least we can hunt a royal lugra. In this episode as you might know the royal loot drop is basically the large version of a loot drop he has been in some break it's always a a good fight in my opinion i like i like the royal loot drop especially in this game since you have to fight him underwater at one point you know it's your first large monster fight underwater. Which is extremely interesting. You know? Here we go. I think it gets introduced over here. I think. Or do we have to go underwater? That's... I hope not. No, we don't. Okay. Royal Ludroff is basically, you know, the king of Ludroffs. That's why it's royal. It has some sort of mane. It's a really cool monster. I love Royal, uh, royal Ludroff. Let's see how we fare against it. Usually it's not that difficult of a monster. But it's... It can be a wall if you're not careful. Um, thing is, I don't have any weapon to cut anything off. And especially, um, it's your first underwater monster. If you're not used to fighting underwater, it's, it's quite a wall. It runs around a lot, it's pretty quick. Let's go. I really like Royal Ludro.
There's not much I can break. I, pr I can break off the claws with the hammer. But to get the tail and the mane, you need a cutting weapon. So, yeah, I don't have those. jumped into the water so yeah it does a bunch of rolling attacks sometimes and it shoots water balls at you and stuff and then it has this charging attack which is usually easy to avoid thing is especially in the flooded forest um, areas can get a little bit too cramped for my taste Flooded Forest gets pretty cramped pretty soon. Um, the deserted island is, uh, in my opinion, the better water area. Just because of how big the area is. So. I think we should uh, try out a switch axe for next time. Or a different weapon at least. You know, it doesn't have to be Switch X. But I've been using the hammer for the first five episodes. And... Here we go. And now it's in the water. Um, it's going to area 5. You don't have to paintball Royal Ludroff. There's only one way it can go. It goes to area 5, then area 6, and then area 8 to sleep. So... That's pretty easy to figure out. There's nothing you can really... It eventually will go to area 8 to sleep. Where is it? There it is. So yeah, um, we're fighting it underwater now. Um, you need to be careful underwater. A lot of monsters get pretty quick underwater. They are better. They are underwater creatures. Like, yeah. Obviously, they are better underwater. You need to be really careful sometimes. It's actually sad that we don't get more underwater monsters. Because I love the concept so much. Oh, it's already weak? That was quick. That was pretty quick. But yeah, monsters get uh, more dangerous underwater, usually. And that is for all underwater monsters. I would love more. I don't think we got that many more in Freehu even. Sadly. But I love fighting underwater. It's so cool. I don't know why people find it clunky. Like, I really don't. It's actually pretty easy. Like, look at this. The, the playstyle doesn't really change that much. Here we go. Like, just the directions change a bit. And yeah, that one was my... my failure. So yeah, your playstyle cha doesn't change. Um, sometimes it... you just need to take into account that you can go up and down. And the monster can go up and down.
if you factor that in, it's actually pretty easy to fight underwater. Underwater combat isn't really that difficult. Like, as you see, I basically dodged upwards. And that uh, ensured that the monster wasn't going to hit me. Monsters are generally harder to hit on the water because they, you know, they have the speed advantage here. This should be over pretty soon. Here we go. That was a royal loot I mean, underwater combat is pretty easy. Sometimes it gets a little bit clunky, but... I'm sorry, this is Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter has always been clunky. There's no reason to hate this more than general clunkiness. I actually like this a lot. I like underwater combat a lot more than any of the clunkiness in future titles, <laughs> to be honest. I think the introduction of ledges is worse than the clunkiness from here. So, yeah. I love this. That's a royal loot drop for you. We've got a bunch of materials. Probably not enough, but yeah. Bunch of materials, and we are good. And that's a second fisher ball coming home for us as well. Um, loyal, ro loyal, uh, royal Ludrov are probably the easiest to gather mogul points with because you can uh, they give 300 points and you can catch them by surprise quickly in the forest so we have a better hunting fleet now as you can see um, we can dispatch two fleets right now And let's talk to the people here. Because they probably have things to say. So, what is going on? So, yeah, Mogo forecast. We have a Kurapeko now in the forecast. There's no new villager requests. Um, yeah, there's another villager request, which is this one. Which requires a little bit of uh, farming again. It's, you know, basically, uh, basically you're enhancing the farm with all of these requests. So, oh, look at that. That's the Argosy, by the way. If you want, if you ever wondered. Um, I think that's it. Here's a quest counter. Um, 
Yes, the next monster is a barrel. Which is still not our urgent, urgent quest, huh? So yeah, um, the Barov is our next monster. Um, it's the first general wall you have as a newcomer. It's the genuine first wall is a Barov. So um, in the next part, we are going to hunt the Barov. Let me check something first before we do the Barov. Um, first off. We can make a Kuropeko hammer now, which is really interesting. Um, it's a it's a fire based weapon, which would make you know, um, this would make um, hunting um, Royal Rudraf way easier if we wanted to. Um, but I wanted to look at this, and I wanted to make this because we have a switch axe now. And let's equip it anyway. Um, we can also upgrade this, which is cool. So yeah, um, I'm going to upgrade the Switch X uh, until next time. And I'm going to try to figure out how to use it. Um, this is, Switch X is my favorite weapon. I've been using it uh, ever since this game as my main weapon, usually. I think more in free you than in um, than in regular Monster the Try. In Monster the Try, I usually try out all the weapons, and uh, did try out all the weapons, and basically did, didn't really stick to one. But in free you, I went switch arcs all the way. So we need more monster fluids. Oh, not to upgrade. Okay, okay. Um, so. Thank you everyone for watching. This is Monster Hunter Try. Next time we will hunt a bear out and I'm going to show you my progress in grinding. And thanks for watching. If you want to see more Monster Hunter content, please leave a like and subscribe. It helps out a lot. And thank you for watching. And goodbye.